The Russian occupiers do not stop storming Savrodonetsk. Street fighting is constantly taking place here. As a result of shelling, the enemy completely destroyed one of the symbols of the city, the Ice Palace, which accommodated more than 5,000 people. The Ukrainian military continues to deter the enemy and even make them retreat. This was reported by the head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai. The Russians have already reported that they have captured the city, but for some reason they are soldiers are still dying in Severodonetsk, and for some reason they pulled back their units with burats. There's a great shortage of burats there, so they pulled them back. That is, they are further engaged in their propaganda, and they are shelling Lysychansk heavily. The Ukrainian military repulsed an enemy assault near Toshkivka, Luhansk region, and the Kherson region. They destroyed three field ammunition depots and eliminated 30 Russian servicemen. The enemy troops were also unable to advance in the Sloyan's direction. They are now trying to regroup there. The situation is similar in other directions. The enemy continues to shell civilians because of its failures. In the Bakhmut direction, the occupiers launched a rocket attack near the town of Kramatorsk. In in order to determine the routes of advance and weakness in the defense of our troops, the enemy conducted reconnaissance near Nagirne settlement. The Ukrainian military fought back and forced the enemy to retreat. Despite certain successes of the Ukrainian military, the situation at the front is extremely difficult, the defense ministry reports. We are losing up to 100 Ukrainian servicemen killed in the hostilities and up to 500 wounded every day. The Kremlin continues to press the masses, faces strong resistance and is suffering enormous losses. But so far it has the strength to advance in some parts of the front. Alexei Reznikov, Minister of Defense of Ukraine. The Russian occupiers have plans to resume an attack on the Zaporizhia region in order to fully occupy the region. For this purpose, they are accumulating military equipment. The general staff reported there is also a threat of Russian saboteurs entering the Odessa region. The enemy fired seven rockets at Bakhmut over the past day. The shells hit a school and one of the shops of the machine building plant. At least two people were wounded. The school was bombed. Tell him that there is another cool kindergarten. Let it be bombed as well. They fire all the time here. I have no words for it. The Kharkiv region also came under fire. The enemy hit Zolochiv and Korobochkina communities. One person was killed and five more were wounded. Sixteen houses were damaged. A shell also hit a dormitory for internally displaced persons from Donbass. There is now no electricity in the settlements. Russian occupiers also killed three civilians in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. The office of the president called on the West to speed up the shipment of necessary weapons to stop the bloodshed in Ukraine. Having tested the blood of Europe once, Russia will try to drink it all by intimidating, humiliating and robbing. The only language Russia understands is the language of force. Their greatest fear is our unity. The only way to win is to have the weapons. The good must be able to defend itself. Mikhail Podolyak, advisor to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine. According to the United Nations Organization, 4,302 civilians have been killed as a result of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. As of today, the Office of the Prosecutor General has been provided with more than 1,600 cases of evidence of war crimes. They have already identified 104 suspected Russian occupiers and eight cases have been submitted to the court. Ukraine's economy has also suffered. The enemy has already caused three million hryvnias worth of damage, reported by Ksenia Buhai Alexander Belov, UATV News.